All right, folks, we are back from the break uh, here at the Reggae Money Show. And Miguel, without ado, let's bring on our guest, uh, my almost CEO, Paul Gadonis. Paul, thanks for being on the Reggae Money Show today. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Thanks for the opportunity to speak with you and your listeners. Yeah, we've been Come looking on. forward to this for a long time. You guys have been in the news left and right. We've done a couple of shows on you guys. And, and boy, we couldn't ask for a better guest. Isn't that right, Miguel? No, that's right. I mean, you know, Paul, thank you so much for joining us here on the Reggae Money Show. Um, you know, uh, we, we spoke to Darren, who is the CEO of CrowdfundX, and, you know, the day that we had uh, Darren on the show was so great because, you know, as part of our show, we were talking about, you know, uh, first movers, and, and that's the day that you actually were listed on the New York Stock Exchange. So we were so excited that we were able to break that news, and Darren was able to bring that news to us. So, hey, if you could – you know, could you please put us, you know, in your state of mind that day, you know, the things that was happening, you know, we, you know, we, we've been fortunate, you know, I was fortunate enough to ring the bell at the American Stock Exchange a long time ago, a few years ago with a different company. But could you tell our listeners what it actually felt like when you actually got that, you know, the, the, that first little ticket that they give you when they say, here, your stock is trading and they, and they hand you that little ticket and say, look, there's your first trade. Uh, it was d- June 12th, and it felt terrific uh, because it had been about a year-long process. You know, we organized the investment bank, CrowdfundX, the broker-dealer syndicates, and after uh, about working on this for about a year, uh, we then continued to sell the uh, offering uh, after qualified by the SEC and then was able to ring that bell on the opening trade on June 12th, and then we were invited back by the uh, New York Stock Exchange to ring the closing bell on Friday, June 16th. Uh, and that was uh, an even more exciting event because th- we invited two of our MyoPro users. A young woman who'd been paralyzed from a stroke used her MyoMo device to use her paralyzed arm and ring the bell. And we had a veteran who's been fit by a VA with one of our devices use his paralyzed arm to, to bang the closing gavel on that June uh, 16th day. So we got a lot of uh, volume that day. Uh, stock jumped up about 60% uh, that day because of all the interest uh, in the stock uh, and becoming public on the New York Stock Exchange MKT. Yeah, that's, 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 that's unbelievable. You know, and just for our listeners, guys, you're listening uh, to Pago Donas from Myomo, the CEO. His stock symbol is M as in Mary, Y as in yellow, and O as in Oliver. You can look them up if you want to see what we're talking about today. You know, you can find them on all, all the uh, financial um, uh, platforms. So, so take a look at his stock and, and see. And then, Paul, you know, uh, Ron and I have been focusing our show on reggae. And can you, you know, we talk to a lot of, a lot of our listeners are, are, are companies who are right on the threshold of either, you know, doing a reggae or kind of organizing themselves to do a reggae. And, and what we'd like to do is we'd like to bring some of this information uh, as a CEO, you know, where did you first hear about reggae? And then, uh, and then it's a two-part question. When did you first hear about reggae? And then why did you think that Myomo and the things that you were doing were going to be good for reggae? Well, I learned about uh, Reggae Plus at a family office roundtable of CEOs in medical technologies who were looking to raise capital. Uh, and the guest speaker was David Weald, who's the former vice chairman of NASDAQ. And David advised us, he said, you know, you guys should be looking at Reg A+, because I worked with the SEC and Congress over the past few years, and it enables earlier stage growth companies to access the much larger public capital markets. And after uh, learning about this, I uh, studied up on Reg A+, interviewed a set of bankers, and we selected uh, Mark uh, Lenowitz of TriPoint Global Equities, who's really been a pioneer in Reg A+, and that uh, enabled us to embark on this process, as I said, a little bit over a year ago, uh, and file all our documents with the SEC and meet the requirements of the New York Stock Exchange. And then, and then how did you know that, you know, you know, tell us a little bit about what Myomo does and, and how did you know that it was going to fit right for reggae? Our, our company is a provider of medical robotics, uh, lightweight wearable devices that conquer paralysis. Uh, there are millions of people worldwide who have arm paralysis. They can't use it, uh, their arm or their hand, due to a stroke, a spinal cord injury, MS, ALS. And based on technology developed at MIT, we have the only commercially available devices that someone can wear to regain function in these upper limbs. So we are an early stage company. We had just completed a successful controlled introduction 
shipping hundreds of devices to patients, working with the VA, major facilities like the Mayo Clinic. And when we looked at uh, the type of investors that would be interested in a company like ours, we wanted to broaden the base beyond the typical institutional investor. And so that's why we decided to take the Reg A Plus route, because there are a couple advantages for a, a smaller issuer like ourselves. There's no quiet period, so you can actively promote the offering, which we did with CrowdfundX and social media. Uh, in addition, uh, we could reach out to the general public. It wasn't limited to just high net worth and institutional investors. And since, in our case, um, you know, many individuals know someone, uh, a relative, a friend, uh, who's had a stroke or a other type of neurological condition who could benefit from this device, we thought we could relate very much to these individuals. And uh, I know that, uh, for, in fact, uh, you know, a number of people who did invest in the IPO uh, did so because it really related to the product benefits. That's absolutely right. We always talk about that, and you hit on some of really important parts, and I think that, you know, as, as companies are looking into the Reg A, and I think you, you hit something that's very, very cr- uh, critical, Paul, and there's a sense of not only are you, you know, pulling your offering out there and, and, and you know, getting the general investing, you know, community to know about your offering, but what you're also doing is another stage, and every dollar that goes into that education of that offering, you're also educating a potential client or somebody who has a potential client to use, uh, you know, who, who has been affected by paralysis, right? So, you know, it's not like you're, you know, you're going out there and just, you know, and that's why Darren is so cool at what he does is because not only is he educating, you know, the, the investing uh, community, but he's also, you know, out there, you know, so that way everybody can see this. Everybody who's been affected by this or anybody who knows somebody who's affected by this can actually say, hey, look at this company. And it's actually like brand awareness, complete brand awareness of your uh, company. Oh, absolutely. In fact, one of the videos that they produced had one million views in five days. Wow. And we've also seen the number of patient leads coming to our website increase significantly uh, since we've gone through this IPO process. So that's a second benefit uh, of the visibility one gets in marketing an IPO under the Reg A Plus process. Yeah, that's, 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 that is, you know, we, we congratulate you. You know, we talk about we talk about the uh, – we have a lot of industry professionals. Uh, you know, we have a lot of SEC attorneys that join us here on the show. You know, and, Paul, we have uh, PCAOB auditors uh, that, that, you know, that come on and talk about, you know, how a company needs to get structured for, you know, to go through a PCAOB audit. And then the great thing about your company is that you were very early stage, so I bet your, your, uh, your PCAOB audit wasn't too bad, was it? Well, we already had audited statements for the last few years, uh, however, in order to qualify for the New York Stock Exchange, uh, we had to change auditors to find a PCAOB uh, qualified auditor. We uh, hired Markham and company, so they started last summer, uh, redid the last couple years of our financial statements, pr- uh, provided those audits because we wanted to make sure we complied with the New York Stock Exchange requirements, not just in audited financials, but also the way we set up our board of directors. Uh, four of our five directors are independent outside board members. Several of them are also personal investors uh, in the company. Uh, plus, we set up all the required uh, uh, committees. We have a governance committee, the audit committee, the compensation committee, all staffed by the outside directors, and uh, we are a full reporting company. So that's another thing that uh, investors should take uh, comfort in, that not only do you have an accountable board of directors, but we'll be doing regular uh, 10K, quarterly reports, and all other required regulatory filings to keep investors posted on the company's uh, progress. That's excellent. Now, your fiscal year ending, your your fiscal ending, so you're getting ready to file your, I would expect your June 30th reports here in the next 45 days or so? Uh, yes, that's correct. So we'll, we just wrapped up Q2, uh, so we will uh, publish those, uh, hold a conference call sometime uh, in mid-August uh, per the requirements. And this is, and then guys, this is, your, of course, your, as you're listening to the Reggae Money Show here with Juan Costa and Miguel Dotras, we do have the CEO of Myomo, that's M-Y-O, stock symbol, the first company to get listed on the New York Stock Exchange using Regulation A plus Tier 2. So, um, Paul, you know, we, we, uh, we, we um, on the show, 
you know, we talk a lot of, you know, reggae and we talk about investments and stock symbols and things like that. But we also like for like our listeners to know that, you know, the, the people that are guiding these companies, the, the, the professionals that are filing these papers, the PCOB auditors and the attorneys, you know, they're all just like regular people, just like, like, like Ron and I. So, we, you know, we have a little segment in the show that we call our FD disclosures. And as you know, as you've been doing your, your officer disclosures, we have a little full disclosure here. So one of the questions that was posed to us by one of our listeners was, how did, how did Paul get into robotics? Well, in my career, uh, I have focused on bringing new technologies to market. I launched the first cell phone network in the country when we spun that out of AT&T about 30 years ago. I've worked at several innovative software companies, grew an Internet services business to a Tier 1 Internet backbone with uh, over a billion dollars of revenue. And then I got recruited by inventor Dean Kamen. Uh, Dean's a noted inventor, and he had started what's called the first robotics competition. And he had started this uh, competition, a sport of the mind, to make it cool to be smart. Uh, And he engaged 100,000 mentors from places like NASA and IBM, General Motors, Google, thousands of corporate sponsors. Uh, And he was looking for a CEO to run this nonprofit organization. And I was the first one in my family to go to college. I studied engineering at Northwestern University before getting my MBA at Harvard. And I decided that I would go and take on this project. And over five years, I grew these robotics teams, uh, increased the profitability of the organization. And through that, I met the team from MIT that had developed the Myomo technology. It was a technical team. They had a really big idea, conquering paralysis with lightweight wearable robotics. They had the patents uh, from MIT, and they needed a CEO to commercialize it. So I like working on big ideas. So I personally invested in the company about six years ago, joined as CEO, and we redesigned the product and took it from there, and now we're listed on the New York Stock Exchange. Amazing story. Amazing. That's great. Now, with all this, with all this going around with you, if, uh, if, we were, uh, if we were, Ron and I were to join you uh, on, on, a sat, on a Sunday, and we would go to turn on the good old DVR or your preferred method of watching the, uh, the boob tube, what what sporting event would you would you invite us over to watch? What what sporting event could we be uh, we be watching, Paul, at your place? Well, I migrated uh, here to Boston from Chicago a little over thirty years ago, and, and all year round you could be watching a Boston championship team playing uh, the sport. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, look at it's the Fourth of July and the Red Sox are in first place. Uh, the Celtics won their conference, uh, and as uh, uh, we head into the fall, my favorite is. Sunday afternoons on New England Patriots football with uh, Coach Belichick and Tom Brady. Uh, great strategy, focus on practice and execution. Yeah, one of, the, one of these days, one of these days, uh, us Jet fans won't lose to the Patriots by by thirty points. <laughs> uh, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Well, but anyway, uh, yeah. Paul, thank you so much for being on the show today. I uh, really appreciate your, your insights and everybody. And everybody who's listening to this show, you're listening to the Reg A Money Show with Ron Costa and Miguel Dotris. We are at regamoney.com. And you can reach us on Speaker, Spreaker, Stitcher, or the iTunes, or just go on to Google, type in Reg A Podcast. You'll see a bunch of links there. So thanks for listening. Follow us on our show, and we'll be at you next week with another great guest for the Reggae Money Show. We forgot to mention that, but it's good. we're coming at you with another really great guest. Can't wait to be there. Looking forward to seeing you guys again next week. Thanks a lot for listening. Bye.